Welcome back to Dual Sided. We're back. Danny Ainge, you know, is today's topic is, you know, this segment, um, you know, and, you know, what happened with Danny Ainge today is, you know, uh, pretty, in my opinion, it's it's pretty, uh, you know, just a miscommunication. Uh, I think he should have, you know, spoke to his, you know, his players who obviously, if you guys don't know who Danny Ainge is, he's the Boston Celtics uh, GM and he's been, a, you know, with the front office for, since 2003 I believe so he's been there since eight, 18 years and then he obviously played eight years he started his uh, playing career in Boston eight seasons you know to give some backstory of what's been going on with D- Danny Ainge you know coming off a 22 point blowout win versus Celtics in Brooklyn Kyrie Irving a former Celtic spoke on the return to Boston for game three and stated and I quote hopefully we can just keep it strictly basketball there's not belligerence or racism going on. Subtle racism. I'm not the only one who can attest to this. The whole whole world knows it. People yelling shit from the crowd, but even if it is even if it is, it's part of nature of the game. And we're just going to focus on what we can control. Later when asked if he himself has ever been of you know a victim of, you know, racism in Boston and you know he responded with not, I'm not the only one who could attest to this. It is what it is. You know, obviously, um, Kyrie, again, once again, he played for the Celtics for two total seasons before signing with the Nets in 2019. And, uh, you know, during an interview on Thursday, uh, Danny Ainge, the GM, responded to the statement by, statement by Kyrie. And, you know, he stated, I think that we take those kind of things seriously. I never heard any of that from any player that I've ever played with in my 26 years in Boston. I never heard that before from Kyrie, and I talked to him quite a bit. So I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter. We're just go- we're just playing basketball. Players can say what they want. You know, and then later to a question asked whether uh, Irving's comments would affect you know future obviously you know f- and future NBA free agents are th- they're gonna wanna. You know, they take into account of you know the atmosphere and you just just the just the image of the fans, the fan base, anything like that. You know, and you know to this question, he said, "I think that everybody's influencing somebody." So yeah, I think that there's my fear is that could possibly happen, but I think that our players and our, and players that have played here in the past all have their experiences to share, and that's just one player. Quite honestly, I've never heard of any of it. I'm not saying the city of Boston I'm saying the saying the downtown of TD Garden I think our fans are very re- respectful and then, you know Angel would uh, later go on to say I mean the first black player first black coach first black starting five I think that our history is pretty good when it comes to that as far as the Boston Celtics are concerned just hearing Ainge you know he you think he's you know he kind of seemed kind of concerned of Kyrie's comments in terms of you know whether that would affect their free agent signings do you think that would just based on what you heard from Kyrie and Ainge so far, you think that definitely would affect it for sure. You know, a player that Kyrie said, Kyrie said, uh, you know, other people could attest to this. You know, and speaking of players that can attest to this, is a current Celtics guard, Marcus Smart, who was asked about Kyrie's comments, and you know, um, you know, he said, "Yeah, I've he- heard a couple of them. It's kind of sad and sickening, even though it's on the ex- imposing team. You're saying." these racial slurs and you expect us to go out there and play for you it's tough and then once again another former Celtics player Avery Bradley backed Irving's comments and stated my family and friends experienced a lot of racism in Boston if they weren't with me they experienced all types of stuff at a hockey game my brother almost got in a fight with someone some people because they were acting crazy I never experienced it but every other person I know that was there experienced it so, I mean, uh, and then, you know, to with some actual proof, you know, in 2019, a fan was actually banned from TD Garden, you know, for allegedly, uh, you know, yelling or throwing a race, ra- uh, racial slur to DeMarcus Cousins. And Kyrie, uh, speaking of the devil, you know, Kyrie at the time responded to the incident back in 2019 saying, I myself can only speak for playing here as an opponent. I've never heard anything like that, but I can only go off of hearing stories. When you hear something like that, especially people of color, I gravitate toward being at, on any one side as long as it's the right side. He said he hasn't been, back in 20, 2019, Kyrie said he hasn't been through it personally, but then, you know, now he says he has. So That's maybe, when he was on the team. Yeah, it's when he was on the team. So he maybe 
experiences from you know the time he signed from the you know to the Nets to you know to twenty one. You know, so there's a two year you know which could be possible, huh? And you know, with Kyrie, his you you could. You know he's changed so much off the off the court. Yeah, some would some would argue that he's not even the same player. But I mean, this is just yeah, he's not even the same person in my mind. Yeah, but and but just in this situation, I think this is just Danny Ainge. Just obviously, he's he says he's been there twenty six twenty six years, I believe. And he like like, and he's never heard racism was as a player and then as a GM. No, but you you believe that twenty six years. Like he played with Bird on all of them. Like he, had, especially back then. Of course, there they had know, to, back like, then. There's everywhere, not just there. So I mean that in that case, I don't like. He's obviously you know, but who knows? Maybe in his mind, he blocks it out. Obviously, he, you know, when he's in Boston, you notice that he sits courtside, huh? Like he yeah. just sits like right here, baseline the hoop. You know, he doesn't sit like amongst the fans or behind benches. You know, he just sits on on the you know courtside where the, you know, where the. You know, media is all all the you know cheerleaders. I don't know if they have cheerleaders. Well, you there think anymore. he wouldn't hear, hear from sitting there? You know, who knows? But I mean, just twenty. He stated that he's been there twenty six years, and all his years he hasn't he hasn't uh you know heard anything. Which I mean, it's kind of hard to believe, but that's that's from him. So we got to believe what you know. We just got to take what they say and you know just run with it. And you know, obviously, what Kyrie said it, that's you know it's serious. And obviously, the game game three is on Friday, and it's. It's you know t- the Nets are up two zero, so I mean they got they're probably gonna close it out. You think they're gonna close it out four zero? Sweep? I don't know. I don't know about a sweep. Yeah, especially in Boston. I mean, I'm I'm not saying Boston's uh, you know fan base is like to this level, but I mean Boston is one of the toughest places to play, huh? Yeah. You know basketball, football, you know hockey. I mean baseball, like any any sport. Danny Ainge, you know he said that. The none no other player has ever told him that they experienced this. Do you think that? And then Marcus Smart goes on. You know, I think of that exact day later, he says, "Oh yeah, I've I've noticed it." Do you think that's just a, a miscommunication between who? Between Danny Ainge and just the Celtics? Yeah, probably. I mean, he he probably doesn't have that. I guess conversation. Was obviously, that? you know, this isn't good for the Celtics locker room if you, know, you no. have a GM. Who just set, speaks for the team and just you know makes it seem like it's a place to play? Which I mean, you know, Danny Ainge is, is has in terms of bas on the basketball court, like he's been one of the most successful GMs in my eyes. But I don't know if it divides this. You think this has some divide? I think it's definitely gonna maybe in the lo- yeah in the locker room a little. You know, I think this is definitely gonna affect the Celtics one way or another. Um, obviously, this no and no, I you, you could already tell that some people are gonna compare this to the Donald Sterling, huh? You no, know, which is. Crazy to even think. Like yeah, I don't know if anything will ever equate to that level, but I'm just saying, like people are gonna, you know, compare Danny Ainge to Donald Sterling, which you know, just, no. just at that so. point, just stop watching basketball. But um, you know, once again, you know, Ainge should have spoke to the Celtics in my eyes before speaking out. You know, that's just, I think that's just what you should do, huh? Even with what did Daryl Morey back in 2019 do? Like he. He just spoke about the incident overseas, huh? Did they, he didn't talk with his team then? I don't know if he did, but I mean, obviously, even you know, obviously, LeBron. maybe he, he probably said the right thing, but I, I mean, he did, it cl- clearly, it's obviously he said the right thing, but I mean, there's it, there's some, money, there's money involved. Like people aren't gonna, people are gonna, you know, change, and they're gonna show their true colors when the dollar bill is, you know, showed. So, you know, once again, if anything happens with this, you know, Danny Ainge, uh, Kyrie Irving, you know, racism in Boston, you know, headline story, you know, we're going to give you guys an update. And if not, you know, hopefully game three is an exciting game. Hopefully the Celtics get back on track. You know, obviously we want it to be an entertaining series, huh? You know, and if, you know, and hopefully nothing disrespectful is said, you know, obviously this past, past week, if anything, you obviously we just spoke about Russ, Trey Young. John John Morant, um, you know, hopefully nothing is said disrespectfully to the players. And it's you know it's the first week with fans, fans yeah. back. So. Yeah, well, first week with fans, play, first week of playoffs. So obviously that's that adds on into the intensity. But I mean, there's still no room for the disrespect. You know, so you know, once again, this is dual sided. Follow us down below at dual sided Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, you know, comment, likes, share, subscribe. And thanks for watching. Peace.